you Okay, great. Hey, Kalias, uh, dear Orlando Ledbetter of the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, just um, what were some of the things that uh, made the Falcons attractive to you? Uh, and then what did they say about your role with the team on the defense? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> when I first met with them, uh, Arthur Smith called me and uh, we had a really good conversation. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've uh, got a lot of respect for him for my time in Jacksonville when he was with the Tennessee Titans. And we competed, you know, and I always thought like his system was one of the hardest to, um, was one of the hardest to, um, uh, to, to kind of study, you know, like I, I pride myself on being a guy that can study tape really at a high level. And so, um, but in, in play Tennessee's and he always had the toughest Tennessee breakers and stuff. So I always like, just respected his offense. And then we had a conversation. I really liked his vision for the team. You know, I really thought he had a, a, a great game plan uh, for, you know, where the team is at right now and where it's going. And um, I really feel like, um, you know, it's going to surprise a lot of people this year. This team's going to be, you know, very, um, very uh, competitive, tough team. You know, win a lot of ball games. Um, you know, and my role, uh, they told me my role would be, um, you know, uh, honestly, one of the other things I liked about it a lot is because they said my role would be uh, playing true DN, you know, playing on the edge on first second down, which it was real, very appealing. And uh, kind of that Cam Jordan type of, they didn't say Cam Jordan role, but like based off of like the defense with Ryan, uh, with uh, Ryan Nielsen, you know, it looked like uh, that Cam Jordan kind of role. So it was very appealing to me. You know, I did a lot of research, you know, and I felt like I can go and do that at a high level, you know, and obviously, you know, I mean, there'll be a rotation, you know, they, I don't expect to play, you know, more than, you know, I think, you know, 60% of the plays, I think would be kind of, kind of where I'm, where I see myself playing, but just, you know, just being a, 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 a a veteran leader, you know, going out there, giving everything I got, you know, being a force on the D-line. But, you know, Arthur Smith said he wanted a, a violent D-line, you know, and I could bring a lot of violence, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Go to Michael Rossi with ESPN. Hey, Kalei, it's good to meet you. Uh, kind of following on that a little bit, you say about 60%. Uh, is that on the high end? Because, like, a, I guess kind of what? how much do you feel like you have – on a game to game basis at this point, just in reality, based off of where things are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I feel like I got a lot in me, you know, I feel like I can play a lot of good football. Uh, I go through um, uh, a very tough off season program to make sure I'm prepared and ready. And then I have a, a team of people that I work with to, you know, keep me going during the season. And a lot of that is nutrition and, you know, and everything else as well. And, um, you know, based off my, my history, you know, which only I can go off of, you know, I feel pretty pretty confident I can go out there and play a lot of plays. Now, you know, if you take away, like, the the, the injuries, you know, obviously that's part of the game as well. Uh, but last year I was on par to play uh, about 70% of plays if you uh, if you take away the injury, like 68% of plays if you take away the injuries. But I missed three games, so obviously it went down. Looks, You know, the numbers, you know, I think I played like 55% or whatever. But, um, you know, but, uh, you know, that sounds about right. 60%, I think I can go out there and give you a high quality 40 plays a game, you know, at a very high level. You know, I mean, 35 of them are going to be elite plays, in my opinion. So there were reports that a uh, conversation with Arthur Blank really was part of what sold you as well. Uh, first, was that accurate? Second, what did he tell you that kind of helped push this over for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, most of the decision came to the football stuff, but uh, it definitely, uh, you know, it's always, I mean, when you get the, the you know, the, the owner of the football team calling you and, and, and telling you, uh, you know, that he believes in you and what you can do for the city and, you know, and I mean, that's going to have, a, you know, a big influence on you, no matter who you are. And uh, we talked and we had a great conversation and uh, the off the field football stuff was huge. You know, he told me pretty much. Uh, that uh, whatever initiatives I want to do in in the city, you know, from a from a um, foundational standpoint, that he'll get behind and support, you know, full tilt. And uh, you know, I mean, this, I just you know, that's a big part of, of of who I am and making sure that I make my presence feel off the field. And so, you know, being able to partner with uh, you know the, the Falcons Foundation and, and do some great things, um, you know, definitely uh, played a role. But you know, this decision was based off of football, though. You know, <laughs> definitely football. You know, I, I think that the team's gonna be a really good team, and I want to be a part of it. I just wanted to be clear. Thanks again. Josh Kendall, The Athletic. Hi, Calais. It's nice nice to meet you. You mentioned that you think this team is going to surprise people by, by how competitive it is. I wonder, you've been in the league a long time. You know, what has been your view of the Falcons, if you've ever thought of them? Well, yeah, I mean, I've played against them quite a bit, you know, uh, over the years. 
you know, but I mean, teams are always changing and evolving. I think, uh, you know, I mean, coaching staffs, you know, front office, you know, um, you know, different players. I mean, you know, the team's not the same as it was last time I played. The game. Well, I mean, I didn't get to play last game last year, so uh, I missed. That's one of the games I missed. So, uh, but I did study them. You know, in um, you know what I like about this team in particular is I just look at uh, you know uh, when I was watching tape at them last year when we, when we were getting ready to play them, and I and I and you know obviously me not being able to go you know affected a little bit of that, but I was still very active in watching tape and helping the younger guys. And I saw, you know, a, a very, very potent uh, run game, you know, which is, which is on par with what, who Arthur Smith as a coach is, you know, and being able to, you know, um, I mean, that 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 you know, wide zone, you know, cut back, foot in the ground. And then Algier, you know, I believe that's how you say his name. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, he, he, he looked special, you know, as a rookie coming out of BYU. I was like, you know, I mean, I didn't know he was going to be that good, but we watched him on tape. I mean, he has... You know, uh, he, he he was special, you know, and then obviously, you know, Peterson and, um, you know, and then even Huntley, you know, they had a, a three-headed monster of just running backs uh, that was just going out there making big plays. And then uh, I think, uh, you know, the play-action game is always going to open up. And then Ritter played played his best game against us, you know, up to that point. I think he only played – his second start was against us last year when I was on the team. And, um, and he played great. You know, I mean, Drake London looked really good, and I just saw, you know, a lot of talent. And then, um, you know, I mean, looking at their, their schedule and watching the games, you know, they were, you know, uh, what, one and seven on the road last year, but all but one of them were a one score ball game, you know, and at home they're six and three. And that tells me that it's just a young team, you know, it's a young team that yeah. is figuring out, you know, and they're in a lot of you know, tough ball games. And you see the, you know, uh, the, the additions they made on defense already, you know, I'm a big fan of Jesse Bates. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, we've been in the same division competing, you know, and I, I, I just love the way he plays football. And, uh, you know, uh, Anyamada, another guy that I've always had respect for, another guy that's made a lot of plays and stuff, you know. Uh, so, I mean, I just, we look at the additions they were making already, it just seemed like, you know, it was, you know they're making the moves where, you know, I feel like the defense, you know, uh, with Ryan Nelson, uh, I think he he has, a, you know, he's, he's a, you know, just a brilliant, you know, uh, football mind. And we had yeah. a really long conversation and I really liked, uh, you know, just his vision for how he wants to play defense. And I felt like, uh, you know, uh, I mean, he made me feel like uh, that, that, you know, my presence there can really help a lot in the way he wants to do things. And, um, you know, and I, and I agree, you know, based off of our conversations, I feel like, you know, um, you know, this defense can be a force. And if we have a, a stout defense, you know, with the offense being able to score points with the run game and controlling the clock, you know, I think that, uh, you know, this could be a, a you know, a, a very strong team. I wonder, as you approach this process and talk to teams who are interested in you, what were some of the questions that you asked them? What were the indicators you were looking for from them to give you a comfort level? Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> I asked a lot of questions, that's for sure. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, um, you know, uh, I think uh, I, I, I pride myself on, like, really going and diving deep and doing a lot of research. Yeah. This process, you know, was a long process, you know, I mean, relative to the, how it normally goes. And so I had, um, you know, a lot of time to kind of go through and do some research and talk to people and, you know, really get a feel for how things are played. I mean, I watched tape on, you know, on Desmond Ritter, uh, you know, and I watched tape, you know, with actually with, with the coaches. It's kind of funny, um, you know, because you don't really get that that often. But I watched tape, you know, I watched, um, you know, uh, I mean, uh, the whole process, I'm watching, you know, all the guys, you know, for all the yeah. teams I'm interested in. And doing my research, I realized that, um, you know, I mean, well, I guess the question you're asking is what questions I asked. I mean, the biggest thing was, you know, um, you know their vision for me, how they yeah. plan to use me, you know, um, uh, uh where they see I can add value, you know, uh, you know, uh, and, but honestly, I think I know where I add value, right? I know what right. I can, who I am. The biggest thing, more so, was what they, how they viewed me, you know, what they, what they, how, how they want to use me, and where, you know, where they saw I had value, you know. But um, you know, a lot of the questions were specific about, you know, their team and their vision and and uh, and, and where they were going, and like just, you know, I think, at the, the day, you know, I had a lot of teams that were interested in me, you know, and uh, <laughs> kind of funny because last year I was a free agent. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was, you know, I had some, definitely a lot of teams that are interested, but it was a lot less, you know, yeah. teams compared to this year, you know, and so it just, it's, you know, what a difference a year makes, right? Uh, but, I mean, it was a lot of teams that you know, sent offers over and, and, and made, um, you know, made me feel wanted. Uh, but when it came down to it, you know, and I did my research and stuff, 
you know, I mean, this place was on par with who I am, you know, and I think that uh, I kind of like that, uh, you know, the underdog mentality where nobody really believes in you, nobody really gives yeah. you a chance, but then like you see, you know, the, the, the poise, you know, for opportunity to break out and have a big year. You know, and I mean, obviously in the NFL, there's never, you know, you I mean, you know, you look at the strength of schedule, stuff like that. And, you know, it's like, you know, I mean, it's the NFL, every game's a tough game. You, know, you never yeah. really have an easy game. Uh, but, you know, I mean, this, you know, this team definitely, you know, plays in, um, you know, in uh, in a division I feel like is wide open. They play in, a, you know, a conference, you know, that, you know, is, is you know, I feel like, you, you know, it's just you get to the playoffs as the number one goal. And once you get to the playoffs, it's anybody's ball game, especially yeah. a team that plays good defense, can run the ball. And that's playoff football. And so I feel like this team, you know, definitely has a, you know, if Ritter continues to continue to develop and be who I think he can be, you know, I mean, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we're playing late in January and potentially February. Thank you, Calais. Nice to meet you. We'll nice go to Jeff you. Schultz, the athletic. Hi, Calais. Uh, welcome to Atlanta virtually. Um, spinning off one of um, Josh's questions, what, I'm sure you talk to players around the league and stuff and your agent. What what is the perception of the Falcons right now around the league? I mean, they were a franchise that obviously struggled with some salary cap issues the last couple of years, rebuilding, you know, flush the front office and coaching staff. And as you talk to guys around the league and before you made this decision, what what is sort of the feeling about this organization right now? <clears throat> well, I mean, um, I feel like it's heading in the right direction. You know, it's, it's trending in the right direction. Um, I think that, uh, you know, when I talk to guys and, you know, uh, was going through that process of, you know, I mean, you know, because I, I feel like a lot of teams are on my list where people, teams that a lot of, you know, outside, you know, outsiders would, cons would consider like, you know, real contenders. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I think the people inside the NFL, the people I, I trust as advisors, you know, I think they also realize and see what I see as well, you know, that this is a team that's up and coming. Uh, that has great potential, you know, and um, I think that, uh, you know, I mean, obviously you got to stay healthy, you know, and, and and build with, you know, and build more depth. That's, you know, then that's, you know, going to be Terry Fontenot's, you know, responsibility. But, you know, I think uh, the last couple of years, they, you know, they were in a bad cap situation, you know, and they had to offload and, you know, recreate and rebuild and, you know, and, and they drafted well, you know, I mean, uh, you look at the draft picks, you know, you got, you know, you got some guys that, that, uh, that they hit on, you know, and so, you um, I think that plays a big role in this, and then now you're able to bring some big, fi uh, you know, free agents in, and uh, again next year they're going to be loaded with opportunity to bring uh, big free agents in as well. And um, so I think uh, it is interesting, you know. I think just you know, you talk around the league and just add, when, my, when I talk to guys, a lot of guys were like, "Hey man, you know, Atlanta, Atlanta is a good, you know, I mean they're they're building something, you know." And the question is just how long will it take, you know, to 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 get there, you know? And that's the question I had to ask myself. You know, because you know, I'm you know, you know, uh, I you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how many more years I want to play. We'll see. I, I did. I do know that uh, I'm playing. I, I got good football left in me right now, for sure. And uh, but the question I had to ask myself was, you know, is it going to be this year or is it another year or two away? You know, and based off my my research and my studies, you know, I felt like it was this year. So you know, I mean, I, I you know, I, I got to trust my gut. You know, I think. You know, uh, I'm a football guy. You know, I, I understand the game at a high level when I watch it, I pay attention to it, and I'm willing to put the work in to understand it, you know, uh, you know, in the current climate and where we're in right now. And uh, when I did all my research and I, you know, put the time and in, 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 um, in hours in, you know, uh, I mean, Atlanta, Atlanta, it made sense. And so, uh, you know, I'm really happy. I'm happy with the decision. I mean, I felt good about it. You know, I mean, you know, for, for we're being 100% honest, you know, which is, you know, always, uh, I guess, appreciated, you know, it was close, you know, I mean, there was, uh, you know, a couple other teams that, you know, made some really strong offers, and uh, one in particular that I was, you know, really close to signing with, and it just didn't feel right, you know, it, was, it didn't feel right, you know, and um, I decided to, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, to go with my gut and go off the research and stuff, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, and, and end up in a spot where I feel like I can add a lot of value. And this is a, you know, a, a very, I mean, I'm really excited about it because I feel like, uh, you know, the team is young and poised and, uh, you know, I think I can get the best out of, you know, I can, you know, try to, you know, just bring my, my, my leadership skills and try to really get the guys really locked in and really focused. And, uh, you know, I feel like we can do some damage together. And uh, thanks. And and on a more kind of my micro review, I mean, this is a franchise that struggled in the pass rush area, obviously the last row well, for a while. Um, what do you see as you look at the roster right now? Obviously, the draft hasn't happened yet. Um, but as you look at the roster right now, what do you see that tells you 
you guys can have a, a effective, impactful pass rush? <laughs> uh, well, I think it starts with um, Ryan Nielsen's um, game plan. You know, I think he he's, uh, you know, I mean, when he was with the Saints, you know, the six years he was there, uh, they had 281 sacks. And, uh, you know, I know, you know obviously he was mostly D-line coach and he was a co-defense coordinator his last year, I think maybe the last two years. Um, but um, he, uh, you know, uh, he has a great game plan. You know, he understands how to, how to you know, how to, you know, get, you rush the passer out of attack, you know, block his games. Then it goes with, uh, you know, I mean, Grady Jarrett, you know, uh, Anyamata, um, you know, I mean, and then a bunch of young guys who can play, you know, a bunch of young guys that uh, they drafted recently that can play. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, we'll have a, a group. And then, um, you know, obviously, uh, the, um, my man, the linebacker, they brought him from the Saints as well. Great pass rusher as well. I can't, um, um, Ellis, you know, but yeah, just, I mean, yeah, they, they got to, they got to, you know, it's just, there's a lot of young guys that can play, that can rush the passer. And I think that with the game plan, uh, you know, there should be a lot of sacks out there. You know, a lot of sacks to be had. You know, I think it really starts with the with the game plan, knowing how we plan to, you know, do, you know, mix up the coverage and and uh, and allow us to rush, you know, and, and create one on one matchups. Thank you. Go to Miles Garrett, Fox Five. Miles, you got us. Um, all right, we'll go real quick to Kevin Knight. Hi, Calais. Welcome to Atlanta. I'm Kevin Knight from the Falcoholic. <clears throat> so you mentioned some of this stuff, but uh, you're coming off an age 36 season where you were still one of the premier run defenders in the NFL, still a very effective pass rusher. That's a very rare feat in this league. Uh, what do you think has been the key to your sustained career success? <laughs> I, I mean, I think most of it is God. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you could put a lot of time and effort in, but it's just blessings. You know, I mean, I've been, you know, a very healthy, you know, guy, you know, and uh, I think that's a big part of it, you know, but I look around you know, at the history of the league, you know, and there's a lot of guys who played, you know, you know, um, you know, well late in their career. You know, I mean, I, Bruce Smith is one of my mentors. He played 19 seasons, you know, and he was still dominant, you know, late in his career. Uh, Reggie White, you know, won defense part of the year at 37 years old, you know, um, Julius Peppers, you know, um, I mean, another guy played great, you know, late in his career as well, you know, and you go down the list. I mean, there's a, there's, you know, it ain't everybody. There's a select few that can do it. Uh, but if they can do it, why can't I, you know, and that's always been my mentality, you know, and I'm not saying, because obviously those guys are the, you know, the, the, you know, the pillars of the game, you know, those are the ones that made me want to play the game, you know, uh, but I just feel like, you know, with my, you know, my work ethic and uh, with the team I've, put, I've, I've built around me, you know, I mean, I, I went out there and got the best of the best, you know, with my team. And, uh, and I've been working with them for a long time. And so, um, you know, and this is, I'm saying my team is in like my body specialist, um, you know, and they're going to, you know, that just, I mean, help me to be, get the best out of, my, out of what I have left, you know. And so I have a good training program that, you know, doesn't, you know, take a lot of, um, you know, my, my knees and my joints and all this stuff. I mean, it's kind of funny because, you know, I was going through the process and all these teams, they want to do these, uh, you know, physicals on you. They want to x-ray your knees, x-ray your ankles and make sure, see what things look like. And, you know, they, uh, you know, every time I always get my knees x-ray, they always say like, wow, like you played how many years? Your knees look like you're a rookie, better than most rookies, you know? And so, I mean, that's why I say it's God, because, I mean, I, you can't do nothing about that. That's just, you know, a lot of fortune going my way. Um, but, but I do put a lot of time and effort in as well, you know? And so, uh, you know, I'm, you know, definitely gonna, I'm not gonna leave any stone unturned. You know, I'm gonna do everything I can uh, to be at the very, very best. And uh, and I can only go off my history. I know, I know, you know, there's a time where, you know, somebody you're gonna you're gonna fade eventually, you know. But uh, you know, uh, based off of my history and what I've, you know, my studies and time and effort, the things I put in, you know, um, I'm confident I, got, I have another. You know, I definitely have another. You know, dominant year ahead of me, and I'm looking forward to. I can't wait. You know, I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity. Absolutely. Well, we're very excited to have you. Um, you mentioned multiple times how impressed you've been with Ryan Nielsen. Um, Falcons fans haven't really had a chance to see his defense in action uh, so far because he just got here. Uh, what do you think fans should expect to see this year based on your conversations with him? Well, you know, uh, I think, well, there's always a level of, um, sorry, my son's coming home, but, uh, but there's always a level of, um, there's always a level of, you know, there's an adjustment period, you know, so you, you know, you got to, you know, bear with us for a little bit, 
you know, because you just, but, but uh, he's process driven. And when you're process driven, you know, and you're going to put in, you know, just you're going to, you know, continue to do the necessary, you know, deeds uh, to be at the very, very best. I think that, uh, you know, I mean, he's a brilliant mind and he's going to put the work in. He's going to have a great process. Uh, you know, he's a great communicator. And I think that's a, as a deepest coordinator, you need to be all that, you know. And so I expect us to have a lot of success, you know, but I think that we're going to be playing our best ball later in the season. And, uh, you know, and I think that that would be huge, you know, you know, we start playing our best ball going into the, the playoffs. And so a big part of that, though, is, uh, you know, you do have to, you know, anytime anything's new, it takes a little time. Thank you. All right. We got time for just a couple more. Uh, Jarvis Davis. How you doing, Calais? Jarvis Davis, Locked On Sports Atlanta. Um, are you, uh, I heard you mention uh, how you talked about um, doing your research. Um, I just want to ask you a, a question about that. Uh, are you into like analytics? If so, like, do you use that kind of like to go towards like to use towards your training, or more so just um, in preparation for a game? Yeah, yeah. No, I use analytics uh, for mostly in season training. You know, in preparation for game. You know, I don't really use them for off season training as much. You know, I think you know I've been I got a program that works for me, so you know, there's no point to kind of you know I'm always trying to improve. But, you know, and, and trying to find different ways and, you know, add more, you know, but at the end of the day, if, if they broke, don't fix it, you know. And so, uh, but but when it comes to in season, I definitely pay attention to analytics. I think, uh, you know, I mean, from a standpoint of, of me, me personally, I do pay attention to my analytics to make sure I'm doing enough and make sure I'm consistent with, you know, my athleticism and, and, uh, and my preparation and training. You know, sometimes, you know, analytics tell you that I need to get back on doing more cardio or doing whatever, you know. Uh, uh, but why I really use analytics is studying tape and studying tendencies for uh, for opponents. And, um, you know, and that's where I've, I think I've had, I mean, I've, I've excelled uh, at, you know, paying attention to knowing where, where the ball is going before it goes. You know, and I think that's a big part of it. Now, I can only see so much with my hand in the ground, which is part of it as well. Uh, but, I mean, I think I've, I've, I've got a good, you know, flow and I, I do pay attention to analytics a lot. Indeed, indeed. And, uh, one more for you. Uh, what were your, uh, forgive me if this question been asked before, but um, what were your first impressions of Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith? Very high, you know, very high. You know, um, I had really good conversations with them. And, um, you know, my first conversation, conversation with Arthur Smith was on the phone. We talked for like 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, he, I mean, Atlanta was not on my list at the beginning of the, of, of the free agency process. I didn't expect to go there. Uh, you know, um, and then he, he got on the phone and we talked and, you know, and I was like, okay, I can take a visit. You know, that was the goal. He wanted me to take a visit. And then uh, I had an in-person conversation and like, I mean, I could look him in the eyes and really, you know, talk to him about like, you know, see his vision, his passion and, you know, the way he communicates. And it was just like, wow, you know I mean? Like, why not? You know, what's, you know, what's, what's Adam to listen? And, you know, Terry the same way. I mean, you know, we, we talked for a long time. You know, we had a very, uh, you know, deep and, uh, and real conversation about life, about football, about, you know, the history of the game and just like, you know, just, you know, his his process, my journey, you know, um, you know, his journey, I meant to say his journey, my journey. And, um, you yeah, know, I really felt like it was, uh, I mean, you know, that was a big part of this. I mean, this is, really, you know, business is relationships, you know, and, and building that team bond that you need to be able to sacrifice one another. You know, you had to believe in the leadership. You know, you need to believe in, in, in people making decisions and uh, they're in a win now mentality, you know? And so, uh, you know, uh, I mean, they definitely sold me, <laughs> you know, they made me a believer, <laughs> which is huge, you know, but um, I, um, I, I mean, the conversations were huge, you know, were great. It was, uh, it was, it felt real. It felt, it felt, um, it felt, um, you know, like this is where I'm supposed to be after having conversations with those guys. And, um, and then, uh, but, you know, I mean, that's a big part of it when, when it comes to being in the locker room and buying in, you know, is those relationships and believing that, you know, we have the proper guys leading us and they're going to, you know, if we buy in and, and, uh, and, and, and make this work, it will work, you know?